Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. In this video series, we're gonna talk about our labor and delivery of our child. This is my wife, she's a labor and delivery nurse, and so I thought it would be interesting to provide perspective from our nursing perspectives in labor and delivery and kind of talk about that and educate other people about the whole experience. In this video in particular, we're gonna talk about what to bring for your labor, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about what I would have done differently in our next birth. Um, so I will talk about what we had, uh, what we had packed ahead of time in case we were going to end up in the hospital because we had prepared for either scenario hospital or home birth. And then I'll have Seth kind of talk more about what what he would have changed for next time if we were going to have another home birth because once again, from his perspective, I think he probably would be able to tell better what we felt like we didn't have. Mm -hmm. um, so ahead of time, I just made a list and I'll show you just on my iPad here. Hopefully you can kind of see. And I'll have a link in the description box for this yeah. as well so that you guys can look at it too. So I had a section for like what the mom should bring, what the dad should bring and miscellaneous and also obviously stuff for the baby. Things just revolve around trying to keep it minimal. Everybody overpacks. Nothing's funnier than the patients that bring like five roller suitcases into the hospital oh, for a two day gosh. stay. So we were able to fit everything into just like one duffel bag. Um, um, and also before you continue, I also want to say that, you know, obviously the things that you bring depend on what your birthing plan is. And like I mentioned in my previous videos, our plan was for Nicole to have a natural birth with no analgesia, but we did need to prepare for the worst, which was that she needed to be rushed to the hospital, maybe for the baby, maybe for her herself. And so this is a list that she made just in case anything were to happen, what we needed. Yeah, so if I'm looking down, I'm just reading off of this list here. So in terms of what to bring for the mom, um, you just want to make sure you have like your ID for registration. You will need your health card. Um, the handheld fan, which Seth has mentioned in a previous video, whether I was going to stay home or not, every YouTube video that I watched of other women um, just talked about this was something that they found crucial to be using. Because even if you have an epidural, I'm telling you, people just absolutely drenched with sweat while they're pushing. It's like the hardest thing you'll ever do. So having something to cool you down will really feel good. Um, so I wanted to bring the little handheld fan or mister, um, just a set of like pajamas that button down at the front for breastfeeding. Um, some people really want gum because they feel like their breath just gets disgusting. <laughs> I think I probably would have liked that. Um, Earplugs were on this list. It's sort of controversial. <laughs> More for the dad, maybe earplugs sleeping at night, but I would not wear earplugs, you know, when you have a newborn in the hospital. So maybe forget that one. Um, depending on your hospital, if you want to bring shampoo and conditioner, if they don't provide that, same with the toothbrush and toothpaste. Um, chapstick was so important also. The most disgusting sensation to me, and the first thing I did after that baby was born was put on the chapstick <laughs> because it was like you're so dehydrated and you don't have the capacity to drink enough water to make you feel like you're hydrated. Um, so just having chapstick. <laughs> and anybody that works in the hospital knows yeah. how dry the air is at the hospital. Um, just deodorant, like normal toiletry items for your first shower afterwards. Um, if you're in the hospital, I did have um, just your eyeglasses if you're a contact wearer. It didn't make a difference for me because I did end up at home, but it is a big thing when you wake up in the hospital and your eyes are like, they're like, you know, stuck open because it's so dry in there that I recommend just wearing glasses rather than contacts if you're in the hospital. Um, and then snacks for during labor, specifically early labor because you will not be eating later on in labor. Um, but earlier on, you just want to have sort of lightweight, easy to digest snacks. So easy carbohydrates, you know, some fruits, maybe um, cliff bars we had packed. We also had little electrolyte packs um, just to add to water to kind of help keep you hydrated better. Um, something to keep your hair out of your face, something like hardcore to keep your hair out of your face. Don't bring a little flimsy hair elastic, bring something that's going to make it not move because you do not want your hair down. Um, and then underwear that comes up really, really high because you don't know if you're going to end up with a C-section. You have to have something that goes over that incision. So um, think about that ahead of time. Um, and then just your nursing bras or nursing tops, whatever you're planning on breastfeeding in. And then lastly for mom, um, nipple cream, which I think 
probably all moms would say just get ahead of that if you um, are planning on breastfeeding. Not everyone does, but if you are planning on breastfeeding, just start applying the nipple cream. It's completely safe to breastfeed with and it will save you. Um, so that's something to apply or to bring also. Um, in terms of the dad, basically change of clothes, toiletry, snacks for dad, very important. I know as a woman, you don't want to have to be worrying about snacks for dad, but I'm telling you, you will wish that you brought snacks for dad when dad passes out from not eating. So yeah. it's important to yeah. pack snacks. <laughs> Same with the water bottle. Um, and then for baby, it might not be the same everywhere, once again, but I, I do think it is at least Canada-wide that they will not discharge you from the hospital until somebody has checked that your car seat is not expired and that the fit is proper. Um, so if you're someone that's like, you know, you're trying your best to assemble the car seat and make sure that the fit's okay, but you're a bit nervous that it's not right, the nurses will check and they won't let you go until you know how to put it on properly. Um, so you have to bring the car seat into the hospital. Um, just a couple like easy access little little onesies for baby to wear. Not that you even have to put clothes on baby. Most of, in my experience, most people don't put clothes on until the day they go home for the baby. They just keep them in a swaddle blanket. Skin to skin is best. Um, some people like little mittens for baby just to prevent the scratching. I know like <laughs> Seth just keeps talking about the fact that he can't believe the fingernails on our newborn baby. Yeah. Um, but they're little talons they're and they- are so cute. Yeah, it's so cute, but they they scratch themselves. A the little mittens would be good. Um, and then, a, you know, a, a hat and blanket if you want. You don't necessarily need those things, but... Um, and then depending on your hospital, if you want to bring your own wipes, but they will provide wipes and diapers for you. Um, lastly, a lot of people do wonder about a soother. That is sort of, it's kind of up for question whether soothers are good to introduce in the first couple of days or not. There's some thought that it may cause nipple confusion, as they call it. If you're someone who's trying to establish breastfeeding and hasn't achieved a great latch yet consistently, switching the shape between your nipple and a soother and a bottle top, it can just kind of make it confusing for them. Um, so I think until you've been able to achieve a good latch, I would personally probably avoid the soother. Um, that being said, it doesn't cause problems for some people, so it's up to your choice. And then um, miscellaneous was just your phone charger. Very, very important. Imagine you get to this moment and you like, can't even take a picture because your phone's dead. Bring a phone charger, um, bring your stroller. They won't let you walk out of the hospital with baby in your arms. You have to be pushing them or carrying them as something. Make sure you check your hospital policies on that. This yeah. is the policy at our hospital. It may be different depending on where you live and at different hospital settings. Um, and then lastly, this is also up to choice, but if you're someone who plans to use a breastfeeding pillow at home, it may be helpful if you have never breastfed before um, to bring your own into the hospital so that the nurses can show you positions using what you plan to use at home. Um, but if not necessary, you can just use the pillows at the hospital, but that, that might be a good idea. So that's everything I pack for hospital bag. Yeah, and so now I'll talk about the labor phase and what I thought was very helpful. We talked a little bit about it in our uh, part two of our video, but essentially for pain relief and just symptom relief, what I focused on doing was getting a mister, um, something that you put water in and it creates a mist. So I'll have a link to all of these products down below in the description box for you guys to check out. But a mister, a fan, like she mentioned, was super helpful. But eucalyptus oil and different fragrances of oil that she, your, your partner will like were very important in order for her to feel comfortable and just provide some relief. In our case, it helped with her nausea. The eucalyptus oil significantly helped with her nausea in, that, in our case. And there is no evidence based to this, but there is just anecdotal evidence of our situation. And during labor, bringing many, many towels and also different sizes of towels. So since we did it at home, we don't have access to the hospital towels. And I think, you know, if you're in the States, they're probably gonna charge you so much for using towels. So bringing towels from like the dollar store, I would recommend bringing like 15 towels. I mean, for our, in our situation, I needed those towels because um, we were giving home, uh, birth at home and different soaker pads, just so we could make sure that when it sh a lot of blood came, it was not gonna get everywhere and we had adequate amounts uh, to clean everything up. So bringing towels, but also um, adding on to that, make sure you get small towels, like square towels. And that was really helpful because sometimes, you know, she really needed to put some hot compress 
um, when she had pain when she was pushing, and then the cold towels on her forehead when she was really, really, really cold. So what I would recommend for that next time, I would bring bowls and I would bring actually a electric kettle as ridiculous as the sounds. But what I did was in order to make the hot compresses, I would put water, hot water in a bowl and then I would add boiling water to that bowl and put the towel in there so that it would get really hot. And then as for the cold compresses, I would make sure that you bring like one of those ice, um, ice packs that you can freeze and then I would put, make it wet and put a whole bunch of towels in there and of course in our situation since we were home I just put the towels in the freezer and that provided that made it really really cold and that was super helpful for her during labor and so those are some of the things that we would recommend to bring to labor and what to prepare going into the hospital because labor is really unpredictable we didn't know that she would do this well at home and so we wanted to prepare for the worst and also we wanted to make sure that she felt comfortable at home. And so those are some of the suggestions we have and some of the modifications I will be making for our next, for the birth of our next child. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you thought it was useful, I would greatly appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up and let me know if you have any questions down in the comments section below. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.